So this is kind of a back overview of 8.3. You've already listened to the author of the textbook give an explanation for sinusoidal side and side 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 and how to find the rest of the parts of those triangles. I want to go back around and just tie up some of the loose ends. If we had been in class, I would have told y'all these are the sassy ones, <laughs> or the S cube. These are case three and four. These are the ones where the sides are intact and we're not going to have ambiguous. We've got a big old formula, but it's not bad when you start breaking it down. And it is based on Pythagorean theorem. And so we'll have a side squared. It's going to be equal to the other two sides squared, and we're going to add it up. And then we're going to subtract a 2 times each of these sides not squared, and then times the cosine of the angle that goes with the side that we're looking for. Again, if you haven't already, I would find some place to put this information on your, your cheat sheet, your <laughs> the salmon sheet, the goldenrod sheet, whatever color it is from when I saw you in class. I would get this on here, definitely where you can read it and where it makes sense to you. And I even put on here, it's for SAS and Side Side Side. You're going to have this during test three. I would make sure that is, is working for you and that you're using it while you're doing the homework. Down at the bottom, it just gives it to us in words as far as what the law of cosines is and says, hey, by the way, if we use something like a 90 degree angle, we would very quickly see that when the cosine of 90 is zero, it wipes out this whole back part. And yep, there it is. It's tied into Pythagorean theorem. So now that you've seen the law of sines and you've seen the law of cosines, it can get a bit confusing when you go back to put it all together. So he's already gone through example one with you on the side angle side triangle. What I'd like to do is to go back through, show you how to use a scientific calculator with all of this, and give you a little bit more direction. He just mentioned doing law of cosines, law of cosines, then do the sum to equal 180 to find the other angle. I'm going to do a variation on that and say yes. When it is side angle side or when it is side side side, yes, you start with the law of cosines. But after that, if you're careful with your rounding, and if you're careful on which side you pick to work on, you can jump to the law of sines, which is a bit easier to manipulate, and get the, and in this case, what I would like you to do is either take a screenshot or jot this down, like pause. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back and do example one. I'd ask you to do it on your own. I want us to go do it, and we're going to notice that it's a side angle side. We're going to find the first missing side, or the missing side, with law of cosines. And then we're going to go back. I've done it both ways. I did it over here on the side as he did it in the book. But I want us to go do it a part next, a part B, a different way, where we are going to use law of sine, cos, cosines first, but then we're going to go with the shortest given side and use the law of sines. And we're going to look at how the answers come out mostly the same and how this is going to be really important on test three that you show your work. So when we start up here, again, you need to be practicing with no helps, whether you're doing with no helps on the homework or you do the homework and go back with no helps other than the formula off of the cheat sheet. But here's example one, and this is an 8.3. They give us a triangle. So I'm going to draw my not to scale triangle just to get my pieces and parts up here and labeled so I can see them. So it tells me that side A is worth two, side B is worth three, and all of a sudden when I put in that angle, I see that it's a side angle side with the included angle. Voila, I use my sass or my sassy one which means I need to use the big old honkin' formula. No big deal. I can even memorize that or go look at my cheat sheet. And so if I'm needing to find something else, I don't have enough to use law of signs, plus it's SAS, so I'm going to go find this side over here. But my formula says I have to write it down as a square. Then I'm going to write down the other side squared, another side squared, minus two times these sides not squared, and this is a place that, 
you need to really be careful because it's real easy right now to, to throw in sine or to throw in cosine. Make sure your brain is remembering. We are doing law of cosine right now, cosines. And so with that, I need to do the cosine of 60 degrees. So I mentioned I wanted to go back and look at this with you for two big reasons, to give you a plan and, or you can do what he did. He did law of cosines, law of cosines, and then did ABC is 180. I want to go ahead and show you this and actually do some punching for you. When we're looking at the calculator, I'm just going to show you the way I like to do this. And I like to start at the back end, unless you're really good with your parentheses. We just need to be smarter than the calculator. So on the back side, I like to go ahead and start, well, depending on what you want to do. But I'm going to go ahead and ask it to do cosine of 60. Now I'm going to double check that I'm in degrees because I've been playing around with different stuff this morning and I am in degrees. So I have the cosine of 60. I like to go backwards and I'm going to multiply it times 3 times 2 times 2. Nah. 3 times 2 times 2 is 12 and it's a negative 12. So I'm going to multiply it times a negative, and you can't see my punches. So multiply it times a negative 12. Enter. And I've got a negative 6 on my screen. Let me cut my light off for just a second and see if that helps. No, it doesn't. I'm going to cut one other light off in just a minute. But now you can't see my screen. Okay. We'll just go with a glare like we're in class. <laughs> so this is sitting in my calculator, and it's this whole back end. And so then I will go finish it up. I'll do, well, let's add in 9. And then let's add in 4, and I pop in equals. And so when I pop the equals, I'm sitting at a 7. So what it's telling me is my c squared is worth 7, but I don't want 7. I need to take c being the square root of 7, and it's going to be about-ish, something-ish. On this type of calculator, I wish I could just pop square root of 7 and be done with it, but I have to work around it, kind of like when he said he had his stored answer. So I'm going to do second squared which gets me to my square root key. And then I'm going to say second answer. That gets me back to my 7. And when I hit square root, or hit equals, it gets us about 2.64575-ish. Eh, so to answer this one, whenever we do our sides, we're going to go to two decimal places. So side C is about 2.65. And I might even want to do it in a different color, because early on I mentioned to you, really rely heavily on your given information. And if you calculated it like we just did, we could have messed up. And if we use that number again, well, our messed up number will get us some more mix, messed up numbers. So I am going to go to my notes that I wanted to look at and show you today. We are going to find the missing side using law of cosines. We just did. We now have all three sides. Woohoo! But I'm missing two angles. And so I'm going to show you a somewhat easier, lazier way. You can use the law of cosines, and that will work every single time. Or we can um, go be a little lazy and use the law of sines, but we need to make sure that we use it for the shortest given side. Because now we've gone back to law of signs, and that's that ambiguous case, and it can create some issues. So we're going to avoid those issues, and we're going to go back. We're going to have our 60, and it's our created opposite side. So I hope we did it right. And then we're going to go find, as I mentioned in the notes, the shortest given side. So the shortest side is 2. So I'm going to go find angle a, because it relates to the shortest side. So to do that, we're going to use the law of sines. And the law of sines says I take my side, and you can't see me writing, and I'm going to put it over, and again, this is where you've got to be so careful. Am I doing the cosine rule, the sine rule? We're going to do it sine of 60, and that is where our shortest side is 2, and we're going to be looking for sine of A. So my brain, I've got a lot of colors going here, and I'm wanting to, I bought dark markers for y'all so you could see. And so here's what I'm going to do. 
my sine of my angle. It is worth 2 times the sine of 60. It's worth these two multiplied together. And I really multiply these together, but I'm so lazy. I'm just going to go ahead and say, yeah, I'll eventually divide by it. And so here we go. So sine of my angle is all of this trash. I'm going to get an answer, but I'm going to be so lazy that I just am going to hit my inverse sine because I don't want sine of the answer. This is my answer. I want to know the angle, so I'll pop my inverse sine. So here I go calculating. Lots of clears because the calculator is dumb. And I'm going to pump, pipe, punch, sine of 60 and hit equals. Again, I like to start right here. And I almost pointed at my computer screen, and that would not help you at all. Times my 2, and I hit equals. Again, just trying to be smarter than the stupid calculator. I'm going to go ahead and divide by my 2.65. And again, that's a number I created. It's a rounded number. All sorts of issues could go wrong here. And that's where I really hope you're listening to him talk about reasonableness. And even, you could do it this way, your first run on the test, and then you should have time that you could come back and do it the different way. Do it, you know, if you did law of cosines, law of sines, then go back and use law of cosines, law of cosines. And are you getting the same thing and you're showing your work? And that way, if you come off a, a tenth different than me, I can look at your work, I can run the calculations on your work, and still award full credit because I did it one way, you did it the other, and you did everything right. It's just sometimes it comes down to the rounding and how much you leave in your calculator. Well, what I have in my calculator is the sign of some unknown angle. This is its sign. Well, I don't want the sign. I want to know the angle. So to do that, uh, and what it would be written as, is my A is going to be the inverse sign of all of this trash I've got on my screen right now. So I'm going to hit second sign because that's how this calculator works. Yours may be more direct. I wish this one wasn't the way it is, but it is what it is. And so I'm going to tell it second answer because that was what I just had on my screen last. And when I hit equals, I get that my angle is, after I do all of this stuff here, it's about 40.8 degrees because they're asking us to do degrees to the tenths and so now what that means is this 40.8 goes back up here at angle a it's about 40.8 degrees so when you're doing this in your homework when you do this on your test you really need to be think about how are you going to keep up with all of your parts the pieces the the work and stay organized, you might want to use multiple colors. You might want to use highlighter, underline, whatever else. But we use the law of cosines. And then I said, if right now you'll use your shortest side, we can use the law of sines. That was pretty quick. Either way we go, we're going to end up doing that the three angles together add up to be 180 degrees. So in other words, the angle I don't know, which is angle B, means I need to take 180 degrees, take off the 60 that I was given, take off the 40.8 that I just found, and I'm going to put approximate because we've got a whole lot of approximates. I'm not going to count off if you don't use approximate, but it is. We've rounded some stuff, and it's not exact anymore. And so on my calculator, hit clear a kabillion times. Go ahead and tell it I want 180 minus... 180 minus my 60 minus my 40.8 equals, and it's telling me about 79 and 2 tenths. So angle B is about 79 and 2 tenths. And that's everything you're going to have to do on homework. That's what you'll have to do in this assignment. And the only thing I would share with you is over here, when I, oh, you can't see it, right here when I did it, I got 40.8. And if you look right here, we got 40 and, and 8 tenths for angle A. But when they did it, they got 40.9. And if I would go back in and instead of putting 2.65 for my side, I think that was C, if I would have put in 2.6458, <laughs> then I would have gotten what they got using law of sines I and mean, law of cosines, law of cosines. So here's what I mean. This is a perfectly good answer. I rounded correctly. I did my uh, 2.65. That's what I put here. And when I did my calculation, I got my angle. 
I rounded to the tenths like I'm supposed to. I got B like I was supposed to. And so all of this would be counted right on the test as long as you're showing me what you used. You're showing me you rounded correctly. But somebody else might go log cosines, log cosines, and then different answers. They're right too. So I cannot stress enough that you show me your work. So that was example one, walking through all of the information. And if y'all could just see my desk, I'm not even going to show it to you. But pretty crazy over here. So now I have some room. I'm going to go to example two. And when you first look at example two, you notice, well, voila, side, side, and a side. Oh, that's the one I'm going to use law cosines. That's case four. No, I'm not going to ask you to tell me, ooh, that was case four. You got to know which one I use when I've got a side, side, side. So right here, I'm again going to draw a knot to scale. Again, example two, 8.3. A not to scale triangle and then I'm going to start filling in the pieces and the parts like it tells me my side A is 4 my side B is 3 and my side C is 6 there's no way I can get ambiguous because these sides are locked in same thing on the last one on SAS they're locked in there's only one way to draw a third side no ambiguous case but when we start playing around with log signs we just got to be real careful so looking at this one, I need to find an angle. And nobody really cares, except there is a nice little process you might want to consider using. We are going to find law of cosines, but just to be safe, let's work our way down. Let's go ahead and use law of cosines and find it of the largest angle. Then we're going to piddle around on this rest and just go to town and finish. Well, actually, you know, we can't really go to town right now because we're supposed to stay at home. So we'll just go down the paper. How about that? And so looking here, I'm going to go find, by using the law of cosines, I'm going to find the angle of the largest side, which would be the largest angle. So since this is my largest side, this is going to end up being my largest angle. It will be obtuse. And so as you're looking at this, we're going to use law of cosines to find that angle C. So you have the formula written here, and you can follow it verbatim that the C squared is the one we're going to be playing around with, and we're looking for angle C. And probably that's what we just need to do. We'll start with our 6 squared. It equals another side squared plus another side squared minus 2 times those other two sides thrown in there by themselves, no squaring, and then pause. I'm using law of cosines, law of sines. I'm using law of cosines, and I don't know what that angle is. Some of you might start realizing how you could rewrite this and go ahead and throw the rewrite on your page. I don't worry with it. I just go ahead and start minusing and dividing and playing around with it. So I'm going to start in my calculator with this 36, and I'm going to minus a 16 and minus a 9. The rest of this, I'm going to need to divide off. And I won't punch that in my calculator. That's going to be 12 and 2, 24. I'm just going to divide off a negative 24. So looking here, we'll get started with our 36 minus. I need to move over this 4 squared, so minus 16. I need to move over the 3 squared. Oops, yep, I punched minus. Minus my 9. So now sitting over here on the left, I've got an 11. Um, I'll go ahead and write that down. I've got 11 sitting over here. This is a negative 24 cosine of my C. And so now looking at this equation, I need to divide off a, divide off a negative, oh, oh, go back, 24 equals. And so now what you see on my screen, we are in degrees. You see that the cosine of C is this junk. I don't need the cosine of C. I need my C, which is going to be the inverse cosine of the junk, which ends up being answer on my screen. So I'm going to do second to get inverse cosine, and I'm going to do second down here, uh oh, down here at the bottom, which is where a shift is my answer. And when I hit equal, I get me an, which was predicted, and will be every time if I use the longest side, 
I have 117.2796, which is about 117.3 degrees. So we found the obtuse one. And now we can start using law of sines. Or you can go do the law of cosine. No. Yeah, you could go do the law of cosines again. Anyway, what I wanted to come on this video, which is getting very long, the law of cosines to find the largest angle. We just did it. Now we can use either the law of cosines or the sines to find another one. Nobody cares which one. I'm just going to kind of keep the practice going of, okay, I found the largest, now I'm going to find the smallest, and round to many decimal places. But again, the book just talks about, um, if y'all are in engineering and building bridges or houses or any kind of structural piece, you need to round a bunch. This is fake. <laughs> this is, let's just learn how to do some of the, um, some of the skills. And so you and I are getting to fudge a bit. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to go find the shortest sides angle. And so I have a side and an angle. And so I'm going to just go ahead where you can see this on the screen. I'm going to go ahead and use my 6, and I'm jumping over to Law of Sines now, 117.3 degrees. And I'm going to be looking for my shortest side, and I'm in the Law of Sines, and B. And this is what I did a while ago, where I multiply, multiply, I'm going to end up dividing off. And so what that ends up meaning is my sine B is worth 3 times, sorry that looks like a decimal, sine of the 117.3, and then I'll divide off what I ended up multiplying times my sine of B. I really don't want that. I'm going to want the inverse sine of all of that answer I save in my calculator, which will be about-ish something-ish. What I just said very quickly is hit clear a bunch of times. I like to start with sine of my 117.3 and get that in my calculator. And you notice you don't have to clear off that or set, finish off the parentheses. That bothers me, but it's one less step. Times 3 equals, and that's my numerator. I need to divide by 6, and that gets this whole piece over here, but that's sine of B. I don't want sine of B. I want B. B means I have to do inverse sine and go catch the answer, which means I do second to get the answer. And it tells me I've got the answer going in there. And then I'm going to hit equals. Now we're talking. So now it's telling me that my angle B is 26.3791, or we'll write down 26.4 degrees. So we now have that this is about 26 and 4 tenths degrees. No matter which way you go at this, if, you, if you're in the law of cosines, you'll use that first. Then you'll choose to either law of sines or law of cosines. Any way you end up, you're going to have that the missing angle, which in our case is angle A, you're going to take 180 degrees, and then you're going to subtract off what you know, 113.3 if we did it right, and 26.4 if we did that one right. And A is going to be about-ish, worth-ish, and here we go. Hit clear a bunch. I got me 108 minus, how about 180 minus, 117.3 minus 26.4 equals, and so about-ish, our third angle-ish is 36.3, in other words, my angle A is about 36.3 degrees. Again, you got to find out what works for you and keeping up with all of this stuff. And just a quick check in the book. They came out with 117. They came out with a 26.4. And they came out with a 36.3. So yay, we matched the book. It's always exciting when that happens. I'm trying to get my little sticky notes back. You saw the little notes there. We're not doing the word problem here. Um, the homework that you've got for 8.3 is going to loop you back to, oh, there's case one and case two. I've got to practice ambiguous again, which is a really good place for you to assess how well you're doing on these two sections. I wish you the best. Hope you're still staying safe.
but this concludes my information on section 8.3.